Hi friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we have to discuss about memory address map in computer architecture course, computer organization course and computer organization and architecture course. First of all, what is memory address map? Memory address map is a table that shows a pictorial representation of assigned address space for each chip in the computer system. So, this diagram or, or this table shows a memory address map. In this table, the second column represents the hexadecimal address. We are assigning the hexadecimal address space for RAM chip and ROM chip. First four can be called as RAM chips and the last one can be called as ROM chip. We have to assign the hexadecimal address space for each and every chip in the component column in a table that table can be called as memory address map. Suppose assume that a computer system needs 512 bytes of RAM and 512 bytes of ROM. A memory address map for this configuration is shown in this table. These 512 bytes of RAM can be divided into four partitions. Each and every partition contains 128 bytes. So, first partition can be called as RAM 1 chip. Its capacity is 128 bytes. The second partition can be called as RAM 2 chip. Its capacity is 128 bytes. The third partition can be called as RAM 3 chip. Its capacity is 128 bytes. And the fourth partition can be called as RAM 4 chip. Its capacity is 128 bytes. So 128, 128, 128, 128. Total 512 bytes of RAM. Next one. A single partition can be assigned to ROM. Its capacity is 512 bytes of ROM. So, in this uh, memory address map table, the first column represents a component column. This column specifies whether a RAM chip or a ROM chip is used. Here, there are two types of chips available in the component column. First one is a RAM chip and the second one is a ROM chip. Whether we are using either a RAM chip or a ROM chip that can be specified by the component column. Next, the second column can be called as hexadecimal address. Okay, this hexadecimal address column assigns a range of equivalent hexadecimal addresses for each chip in the component column. For RAM 1, we are assigning the hexadecimal addresses 00002007F. For RAM 2 chip, the hexadecimal address assigns 00802000FF. For RAM chip 3, we are assigning the hexadecimal address space 01002017F. And for RAM 4 chip, we are assigning the hexadecimal address 01802 01FF. For ROM chip, we are assigning the hexadecimal address 
जीरो टू जीरो जीरो टू जीरो थ्री एफ एफ ओके सो बाई यूजिंग दिस हेक्सा डेसिमल अड्रेस कॉलम वी आर एजाइनिंग ए रेंज ऑफ हेक्सा डेसिमल इक्वालेंट अड्रेस फॉर ईच चिप इन द कॉम्पोनेंट कॉलम नेक्स्ट द थर्ड कॉलम इन द मेमरी अड्रेस मैप रिप्रेजेंट द अड्रेस बस लाइन्स ओके एक्चुअली अड्रेस बस कंसिस्ट ऑफ सिक्सटीन लाइन्स okay but in this uh, address bus only we are using first 10 lines the remaining six lines the remaining six lines cannot be used they can be treated as zeros okay generally the address bus consists of 16 address lines among the 16 address lines we are using only 10 address lines remaining 6 address lines cannot be used they can be treated as zeros okay next one here a small cross mark is there a small cross mark under the address bus lines indicates that first seven lower order lower order address lines are connected to the address inputs of each and every chip in the computer system okay so the first seven address lines of the address bus are connected to the address inputs in each and every chip in the computer system next one here eight and nine address lines so these lines are used for identifying which ram chip is enabled among the four ram chips among the four ram chips which ram chip is enabled that can be decided by the eight and nine address lines okay suppose 8 and 9 address lines values are 0 0 ram chip 1 is enabled 8 9 address lines values are 0 1 0 so ram chip 2 is enabled 8 and 9 address lines are 1 0 ram chip 3 is enabled 8 and 9 address lines are 1 1 ram chip 4 is enabled among the four ram chips which ram chip is enabled that can be decided by the address lines 8 and 9 next address line 10 is used for whether we are using either a ram chip or a rom chip that can be decided by the address line 10 if the address line 10 contains a zero value it indicates that ram chip is used address line 10 contains the value 1 it indicates that rom chip is enabled okay so if the 10th bit value is zero we are using only ram chip if the 10th bit value is 1 we are using only rom chip among the ram chip and the rom chip which chip is enabled that can be decided by the address line 10 whatever the bit information that is available in the address line 10 based on that bit value we have to determine whether a ram chip or a rom chip we are using if its value is 0 we are using ram chip if its value is 1 we are using rom chip next one among the four ram chips which ram chip is uh, enabled that can be decided by the 8 and 9 address lines 
if its values are 0 0 so ram chip 1 is enabled 0 1 ram chip 2 is enabled 1 0 ram chip 3 is enabled 1 1 ram chip 4 is enabled okay so this is the use of 8 9 10 address lines of the address bus okay these the first seven address lines of the address bus are connected to the address inputs of ram chip or a rom chip okay next one uh, this is the this is the block diagram of ram chip and this is the block diagram of rom chip okay the capacity of the ram chip is 128 into 8 that means it contains 128 words each word contains 8 bits okay among the 128 words which word is to be selected that can be decided by using 7 bit address so therefore 128 can be written in terms of 2 powers we are getting 2 power 7 therefore in the power 7 is there so 7 bit address is required to select any word among the 128 words okay this input is called as 7 bit address that is denoted by ad7 here rd and wr inputs specifies the read and write operations next one the first two inputs cs1 and cs2 bar can be called as chip select inputs these are used for enabling the ram chip that is selected by the cpu next one this is called as 8 bit bidirectional data bus by using that 8 bit bidirectional data bus we are performing read operation or a write operation during the read operation the transfer of data from ram chip to the uh, cpu is there during the write operation the transfer of data from cpu to the ram chip so in both in both directions the data can be transferred so that we have to use bidirectional data bus it contains 8 bit next one this is the block diagram of rom chip the capacity of the rom chip is 512 into 8 so it consists of 512 words each word contains 8 bits to select only one word among the 512 words we are using 9 bit address so 512 can be written in terms of two powers in the power 9 is there therefore 9 bit address is required to select any word among the 512 words that is denoted by ad9 next one so these two are called as chip select inputs by using that chip select inputs we are selecting we are enabling the rom chip that is selected by the cpu next in the case of rom we are performing only read operation we do not perform write operation so that it the data bus is only a unidirectional 8-bit data bus because we are performing only read operation so that the transfer of data from ROM chip to the CPU can be done. So in that direction only data can be transferred so that we have to use 8-bit unidirectional data bus. Okay. So here 512 bytes of RAM. So that is nothing but 512 can be divided into 4 128 RAMs. So 
This is the first 128 byte RAM. This is the second 128 byte RAM. This is the third 128 byte RAM. This is the fourth 128 byte RAM. So the collection of these four RAM chips denotes 512 bytes RAM. And ROM is only one, its size is 512, 512 bytes. For this RAM and ROM chips, we are assigning the hexadecimal addresses by using 16-bit address bus. So that can be shown in a table. That table can be called as memory address map table memory address map is nothing but we are mapping the hexadecimal addresses for ram and rom chips for this configuration so 512 bytes of ram and 512 bytes of rom that can be shown in a table that table can be called as memory address map table okay so among the RAM chip and the ROM chip, which chip we have to use, that can be decided by the 10th address line. If, it's, if this bit value is equal to 0, we have to use RAM chip. If its bit value is equal to 1, we have to use ROM chip. Among the four RAM chips, which RAM chip is enabled, that can be decided by the 8 and 9 address lines. If its values are 0, 0, we have to enable the RAM chip 1. If its values are 0, 1, we have to enable the RAM chip 2. If its values are 1, 0, we have to enable the RAM 3 chip. If its values are 1, 1, we have to enable the RAM chip 4. Okay. So the small cross mark under the first seven address lines of the address bus are connected to the address inputs of the RAM or a ROM chip. Okay. In the case of RAM, so here we have to use first seven lower order seven address lines of address bus are connected to the address inputs of the RAM chip. Okay. In the case of RAM, first nine, first nine, first nine address lines of the address bus are connected to the address inputs of the ROM chip. Because in the case of ROM chip, nine, ad nine bit address, that is nine address lines are available. In the case of RAM, only seven address lines are available. So in the case of RAM, seven address lines of the address bus are connected to the address inputs of the RAM chip. In the case of ROM, nine address lines, nine address lines of the address bus are connected to the address inputs of the ROM chip. Okay, so this is the description about memory address map. So this diagram shows the RAM chip, this diagram shows the ROM chip and this, diag this table shows the memory address map. I hope all of you understanding this uh, concept. If you really understanding this concept, so please click on the like button and share this video to your friends and classmates. If you really like this video, please subscribe my YouTube channel, Devela Srinivasarao. After subscribing my YouTube channel, click on the bell icon to get the future updates in my YouTube channel. If you have any doubts, please put your doubts in the comment section. I will try to clarify your doubts for better understanding of computer architecture or a computer organization course go to this channel and go to the playlist called computer organization or a computer architecture or a computer organization and architecture thank you thank you one and all for watching this video